and I'm going to have it at 7.30. So we'll, we'll get started. And I'd like to have a roll call. I see Steve is here. <laughs> Michelle is here. Scott's here. Everybody's here except our president. He's in Kansas, left over from our hunting trip. <laughs> so he's recovering. Okay, reading of the minutes and approval of minutes. Anybody want to uh, take a look at those and we'll, we'll approve or disapprove those? That's the read. That goes clear back to 20 August. I make a motion that the August 20 meeting minutes be approved as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. Second approved, so ordered. How about our, town, our town staff? Do we have any reports today? Yes, we had um, an in-office variance over on Moorfield Court for a reduction in the rear minimum setback from 25 to 20 for a rear addition to the home. We've had Manchester Farm 7 has been final paved and we're waiting on the road deeds and warranties. Uh, the new business in where Created and Company was has begun in there. It's going to be a salon. Um, and we have been approached, which we may have already discussed this, but we have four potential annexations who have inquired. And that is, um, of course, um, the Lippy property, Patriots Overlook, uh, the Schaefer property, which is a piece of business property, Ferrier and 30, and the Cook property, which is off of Jamer Road. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. Thank you, Michelle. Thank the you. variance was approved on the, um, the setback, just for clarification. This that, in that office, yes, yep. when it's only, yeah. They actually had a deck already and had a variance for it, but they had to do it again because they're going to put a permanent addition. Mm -hmm. There's child handicapped and they had to have one level. One familiar deck. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what has our town been up to with the council? The council was there some. Anything else? The town's over here. Yeah. Steve. He's got just one quick thing, which, which we have a large agenda tonight, to bring the commission up to speed. Uh, it appears that we will be uh, starting the Whispering Valley Stormwater Management Facility retrofit, uh, hopefully in mid-December. Uh, that is a, a project which the town and the county resource management is partnering in. And uh, that will probably go through till late spring, beginning of summer. So you'll be seeing some construction down there. So that's the uh, stormwater management facility as you enter Whispering Valley at Michelle and 30. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. Back on over to our council. Okay. Mayor and council met last week. <laughs> um, uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. I did brief them on our work session. Let them know that the our town attorney is summarizing all of our recommendations. Once we've had a chance to take a look at that, and we're okay with it, then it'll be then submitted to the mayor and council. Other than that, it was normal business. Okay, thank you. Okay, Price, what's going on with the county? Good evening. Uh, not much has changed since, actually, even back in August, but. <laughs> The, we're having another work session with the county commission on Thursday, still in talks with our uh, master, the comprehensive rezonings for the business, industrial, and economic employment campus sections of the code and maps. We have hired two new planners, so we are now fully staffed. Uh, one is a planner one, the other is a plan technician. Um, uh, the planner one has background. He came from Howard County, and he actually will be taking over Mount Airy, and our planning te technician will be taking over Union Bridge. So we'll fully staffed, and I believe starting in December, we're having a contract employee who's going to be doing nothing but the census work for us. So obviously, they'll be, however long the census takes, they'll be with us working just solely for the census, but we are... After a long time, fully staffed, we are busting at the seams now. 
Okay, good. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, concept approval for Riley's Garden. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I was here last meeting, which was August 20th, and at that time we had addressed some comments or concerns that were expressed. I'm too short to see over the top of it. But anyway, um, at that meeting we brought back a revised plan that actually showed that some of the houses were decreased in size and that there was additional um, area between the buildings and the property lines in order to allow for decks and such things without having to come back to the commission and ask for variances. Um, Mr. Graham, on behalf of the commission, made it quite clear <clears throat> that the commission would not be receptive to any variances going forward once this project was recorded and requested that we provide a document either to be recorded with the plant, plats or added as a note on the plats that would make any purchaser um, aware of this. And I think Michelle has provided you with a draft of what we propose and present here for you tonight. And the proposed restrictive language to be recorded either on the record plats of the lots being created or filed separately at the direction of Manchester Planning is such. Lots approved as part of Raleigh's Garden have been reviewed by the Manchester Planning and Zoning Commission and approved with the clear understanding that there shall be no variances considered and approved going forward. Potential purchasers take notice. Um, does that meet the... Um, I think that meets the intent pretty well. Okay. In addition to that, the, the plats now have setbacks for all four uh, all four setbacks rather than just having the front yard setback. And right. I'm advised that by having those recorded on the plats that um, a variance could not be approved without the Planning Commission signing off on it. So I think we're addressing the concerns that were expressed. And I also am of the belief that at this time we have all of the approvals from the agencies that are <coughs> responsible for review. Is that correct, Michelle? Yes. Therefore, at this time, I'd like to ask for approval of the preliminary plan. To answer any questions that you may have, or try to. I don't think I have any additional questions. I reviewed the letter from Carroll County regarding the stormwater management. Everything appears to be in order now, and that was that and the restrictive language were really yeah, the last That's two. always the last thing. Those, those were the last two issues mm -hmm. that we had that we, we felt needed to be addressed. So I don't, I'll defer to anybody else if they have any other comments. I have no other comments. I, I thought everything was adequately addressed, so I have no questions. My, my only question is just a clarification on, on the dry well issue. I know um, <coughs> future maintenance had been a... A question, I think, on, on those dry wells, because I, I I'm not quite clear on exactly how they work. Um, dry well maintenance on the lots are the responsibility uh, of the lot owner. The lot owner. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, but we haven't written in dry well ordinances yet. We've adopted the county stormwater management ordinance, which that language is included into their ordinance. Okay. So so we can, we can go after the homeowner to clean up their dry well area if it becomes correct becomes if the dry well if the dry well is not functioning yes we right. can go uh-huh because their purchasing so agreement at settlement will have that listed on the plats correct that they're responsible for the maintenance of that because there's I, a, I there's a recorded read. easement on those dry okay. wells yes so okay yeah. and then that that small house that was sitting backwards is it's now frontwards facing um and not 
on, on lot three, the original plan had the, the, the front of the house facing the side yard and the, and well, the rear. So I it's, think it's turned now. Where I, it's, I'm going to make a statement that um, you may or may not agree with, but what is identified as a front yard really has no bearing on where the house faces. Just aesthetic in the neighborhood, I guess. Okay. Any other comments? No, you know, I make a motion that we grant concept plan approval for Riley's Gardens as submitted. How about preliminary? I have a second on that. Mr. Shelley, would you hold on? Mr. Hill's asking a question. We were approving concept, and he said, what about preliminary? I thought we were approving preliminary because this is a minor. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that the um, a minor subdivision can be submitted as preliminary, not have to go through concept, and it's it's all here anyway. Yeah, I'm looking at the code. I'm, to, I'm trying to see where it, it doesn't necessarily specify that for a minor here. If we come back next month, we're just going to bring you the same exact thing. And we have all the approvals. That's true. Mm -hmm. Usually we don't have all the approvals. I yeah. Have yeah. In that regard, Mr. Hill is correct. I mean, based on what the preliminary plan approval requirements are, they have all the county approvals. They've okay. met that. So you I will amend that motion then. Okay. I will amend the motion to grant both uh, concept and preliminary plan approval for Raleigh Gardens as submitted. Thank you. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Nice Aye. Aye. Welcome. A two for one. May I uh, pass out a copy of my presentation in case you want to follow along? Tonight's purpose for this presentation is to ask for concept plan approval and also to discuss some zoning variances. Um, you've seen the plan a couple of times. We, we brought it as an, 
it, as an informational presentation. And uh, we had a couple of issues that I think we've addressed. And I, I, we could either skip right straight to questions or I can do a quick presentation of the project and then a the presentation. It's been okay. a few months. So the first thing that we're looking at is the, uh, the site. It's the uh, Burwagger property. Um, that's right off of Park Avenue at near the intersection with uh, Westminster Street. The property is zoned R10,000. It's 11.6 acres. This would be considered an infill project uh, because it's surrounded by a good road system, water and sewer on all sides. Um, the, the adjacent properties are already developed. So I wanted to go through the some of the changes Let me see how to get to the next page. Okay. Um, well, that was, um, so some of the changes that we've had from uh, the preliminary plan, we've refined the stormwater management. We've conducted a lot of geotechnical work. We've refined the grading. So I think we've minimized the cut and fill. Uh, we've profiled the road so that the, uh, the site distance and the road grades match. And we've also set the boundary and uh, proposed line, the uh, lot lines have been set. So the, um, let me see if I can go back up. That's not where I want to be, sorry. I'm going through my whole presentation backwards here. So th this was the uh, site plan, and, and that's the, uh, uh, the, the, the layout's exactly the same as what you saw at the final uh, preliminary plan, with the exception of we have a, a little bit of a wiggle that we put in when we moved the cul-de-sac back. And I'm going to talk about why we moved the cul-de-sac when I talk about the stormwater management. But I think um, what what I would like to make sure that the commission would understand is that the uh, the, the goal of this project is to, um, boy, I am not getting my page up and down to work. I'm sorry. That's not it either. Um, I'm right back to, uh, okay. Um, so the, the idea is that we got a house that is um, approximately 50, wait a second, let me try to get to it again. I might have to just wing this. So our, our standard house for Bob Ward, um, he's got, a, he's got a, 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 a pallet of a number of houses, but for this subdivision, what we did was we laid it out as though every house was going to be their largest unit, which is their Chesapeake, which is a single level unit. So with all the options, it's a 60 foot wide unit. With all the options, it's 58 feet deep. Every lot has room for the, uh, the 600 square foot parking in the front, uh, which is a 20 by 30 foot parking pad. So the, the, uh, here's a photo of what the Chesapeake looks like. I think it's an attractive unit. Comes in a lot of different variations. This is the backyard of it. Um, you can see the sunroom that sticks out. We'll talk about that when we get toward the end. The first thing I'd like to point out is that we had some conversations about Park Avenue and the entrance. Um, this is likely going to be um, the bus stop. And we talked about how to not allow this to be such a congested place. So we've, we've actually widened the road inside that, um, that 40 foot right away. So there's a 30 foot road, 30 foot wide road, um, which gives us space for seven cars to park on the side and still have two way traffic. Um, this was the remaining section 24 feet, uh, 22 feet, 22, 22 feet curved. Um, then the, uh, th this section also has curb, um, a curved entrance um, and it has a sidewalk on both sides and you notice in this particular area the sidewalk is actually comes all the way up to the edge of the road so in that 40 foot section we didn't have room for the the grass strip that you'll see in other parts so this this little section is a little bit different than the rest of the the road grid and um, it this will be where the community mailbox will be located It's, it keeps wanting to go backwards. 
I'm guessing which button to push. I feel like a toddler with uh, a hit page down. Up, and down, it, left, right. It, it, now I came all the way out of it. Maybe that's all it needed to do is get reset. Okay, so now the page down is working now. So the, uh, the, the next point I would like to, to point out is that the um, – we, we had always shown the stormwater management being in the front in the low area adjacent to Park Avenue. We've done a number of geotechnical tests out there, so this is a zoomed in of that, that first sheet. What we found was that our test pit at A wasn't adequate for infiltration. What we're looking for is to get at least a half an inch of, of uh, infiltration per hour, and A didn't do that. And you may remember from the the last time when we showed that was where the stormwater management facility was going to, going to be. So what actually, what we've actually done is we flipped the lot that was where the cul-de-sac is now over to the entrance side. And so it's just kind of a mirrored image. And the other tests, D and E, were both very, very good for us. Um, and then you can see the sediment four bays on, on either side. So the sediment four bays don't have a test to pass. They just have a volume requirement. So the facility that we designed is called an infiltration basin. The design goal is that it would return to a dry state within 72 hours. Um, we'll have some safeguards that we're going to build into it so that if for whatever reason it, it clogs and it's not draining, we'll be able to open up some under drains and relieve the uh, facility without pumps or anything but by gravity. The... Uh, this facility is going to address the stormwater from the roads and the driveways. So it's a mix of, of, the, of the two types. Um, now the rest of the units are, the rest of the rooftops have got to be treated somewhere. So this is the submittal sheet for the drywall plan. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So if you look on the right hand side, you see the layout for lots 22 and 28. And the, the, rec, the uh, square boxes in the back represent drywall locations. So the, 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 the goal is that each dry well can handle about 1,000 square feet of rooftop. So we're just a little bit over 2,000 square feet on, on our layout, so we're showing three per unit. Now, when we did the geotechnical work, we actually had to do one test per lot. So there's a lot of, a lot of holes out there, um, but we actually found every one of them were successful. So we, you know, really what we're looking for is hard rock that would not allow us to... Uh, to construct or to have the uh, dry wells work. Um, so when when the actual lot is built, depending on the house that's selected, it, there may only be two dry wells. But as far as a concept is concerned with the county, this you would be... You have capacity for three. We are correct. Proposing three. We have room for three if, if, the, if the Chesapeake, which is the largest rooftop, is used. So we have a landscape plan. Um, basically, the landscape in this area is we're going to screen backyards from adjacent uses. So along the, the uh, edge of High Street, uh, we have a number of units that have their backyards facing High Street. There'll be a, a, a full screen along High Street. We'll have uh, the same thing occur between the apartments on um, <coughs> Maiden Lane and the back of our, our units on the, uh, at, the, at the entrance to uh, uh, Mustang Court. Then we also have one down at Park Avenue and a couple of little ones interior where backyards are actually exposed to the street. Um, I, I added a, a plan sheet for the intersection details. Uh, I thought that might be something we want to talk about. Um, the, the intersections are, are pretty standard. I, I did use wide sweeps so that we could get standard uh, delivery trucks to come through. Um, tractor trailer is going to wind up going across this crossing into the opposite lane, but I think that's going to be a, a rare occurrence rather than you know normal normal traffic. Um, and the cul-de-sac is large enough for a school bus to uh, to enter and turn around which typically I would assume that you're going to have uh, garbage trucks more than, than school buses needing, needing to, to make that maneuver. 
Uh, we have some off-site drainage issues that, that we are going to be addressing. Uh, Park Avenue has two inlets on it currently that are, are uh, inadequate to uh, drain the water away. Um, we're actually going to increase that number to four. So we'll have, we'll have three new inlets on our side of the subdivision and we'll rebuild the one on the far side or the downstream side. Um, and then we're going to build a new underground system uh, along Westminster Street. So right now what happens is the water comes out of the pipe at the edge of Westminster Street and cascades down the road. We're going to keep that water in a culvert or in, in a, a pipe, take it across the street, and then take it down to, um, oh goodness, now I can't think of the name, uh, the entrance to um, the Pizza Garden. Um, I can't think of the name Westchester of that. Square. Westchester, Westchester Square. Westchester Square. Square. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, so that, that'll be and it's the same amount of water. So we're, we're just capturing the existing problem and, and fixing that as part of, of this development. Um, the last part I'd like to point out on the off-site stuff, we have uh, a lot of water that comes down uh, High Street, drops into St. Bartholomew's uh, parking lot and kind of meanders across the edge of their property and then it comes out onto Park Avenue. I met with the, the church and they were open to having us uh, rebuild the edge of that road so that it would be a, um, a continuous curb line that would deliver water out to Park Avenue. Once it comes out to Park Avenue, we're going to capture it in a new inlet. So that's, that's the, uh, the thumbnail version of what we're trying to accomplish out there. What are your thoughts on the stormwater management as they're proposing it right now? Rich and I and Michelle met and we spoke about this. Uh, you know, of course, any stormwater management it always lays in the lowest spot. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing right out of the gate I looked at is, is landscaping around that area. Concerned about that. Uh, Rich did mention tonight, which I brought up this question, the, uh, the amount of water flowing out of the development and traveling down through into Westchester Square. And then you have to remember it crosses over to Route 27 and down into the stream right. that is, you know, considered there, that brook trout was Natural down. trout stream. So, uh, you know, that, that may be a conversation that may come, come up during county review. Uh, I don't know. Right. It's a possibility. But, uh, yeah, I, I did voice my concern. I am concerned about that stormwater management facility being so close to Park Avenue right at that particular spot. So there may be some things we could do, you know, along the way that we could, you know, rectify that more for a safety issue, you know, an right. aesthetics issue than, than anything. And not really a functional issue, more correct. safety and that aesthetics. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So. I would point out that currently we're proposing a sidewalk along there so maybe maybe there should be some kind of a vegetative barrier between the, the facility and the sidewalk certainly we're going to grade it with uh, you know three to one slopes but still I, there would be room for us to, to, to show some landscaping there right and and we may want to look at some landscaping that isn't so uh, so thick uh, we're running into some issues and some other developments where landscaping was put in and it's along the sidewalk and it's very thick and parents are concerned about their children walking down the sidewalk so we have to take that into consideration also so what's the dimensions of a dry well box so currently i'm showing them as eight eight by sevens. Um, I do have a table on the, uh, in the submission where they're, they're sized, um, but I, I believe they're eight by sevens. So it's eight by seven by five feet deep. Um, we're really just shooting for volume. So sometimes depending on uh, the excavator, they wind up being, you know, 10 by six, but the goal is to have them pretty relatively square. And the borings on the lot supported? Correct, they did, yes. 
And I was kind of surprised the uh, county, we, we went to the county and said, hey, this is the geotech program we want to do for the uh, stormwater management facility. Oh, and by the way, we're doing a couple of for the dry well. And they really pushed back on the dry well and had us do one, one per lot. Um, so they were, they were. Uh, to make very, sure they were getting yeah. infiltration on each of the lots. Correct. And, and we're really looking for um, rock and, and a hard right. land for those. Rich, I was taking some notes and I think I heard you say this. It is curved throughout. Correct, it okay. is. Just for my lack of knowledge, again, what's the top what's the top coating on a on a dry well? Is it actually grass or is it stone? So um, I actually have a detail. Let me see if I can <clears throat> I just can't read get, what it says. To I that. Have it here, but <clears throat> I'm not sure I've ever seen So that. in the in the detail here, and I don't have my laser pointer, but you can see in the, uh, the right-hand detail, um, see the basically, cap. basically at the top, you've got a layer of about 12 to 18 inches of topsoil. Okay. So, so you, you actually, if it's done right, it actually looks like lawn. You just see um, the cap? Correct. You put in uh, the uh, observation caps. You can, you can actually put things on top of these. You know, people can put a shed on top of it. Um, the only thing you really can't put on it is anything that requires a foundation. So if you've got to dig a, a post, you got to use a post hole digger on it, don't put it on top. No in-ground pools. Above ground pool would be okay. Um, surface patio that's just on, 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 um, on block would be okay. So you don't actually lose your lawn, right. but you still have to be able to see the observation board. Help me with my next question because my next question is going to be towards Michelle about sheds in the backyard. Um, and they kind of help with that one because if you do, if you did storm, if you did these dry wells and then we couldn't put sheds on them, you'd have 31 property owners that might be upset that they can't put a shed back there. <clears throat> but that's, I can guess it's not the case. <laughs> Right. They can't put a pool. Yeah. Can't put a pool. That's okay. They can join the community pool there. Right. Mm -hmm. Lions Club. Yes. So I do have one request on the zoning. Um, we had talked before. One one other question, Rich. I'm just yes, just. Just checking. You are so all the road network is going to that stormwater management facility. Yes, sir. That's okay. Correct. I'm just. I was just checking the grades here. Um, I should say that there is a small piece at the connection to um, High Street that actually kicks the other way, um, but I'm accounting for that area in my facility. So it's basically a swap because I've got I've got some offsite area that's coming in that you're going to pick up in the facility. Correct. Okay. So. Technically, some of the new stuff on Mustang Court is actually going off-site, but I'm, I'm going to treat uh, an equivalent area off a of high street. Steve, do you know of any situations currently where the the monitoring of the the dry well MDE puts that cost on the town? Or no, no I, I brought haven't heard any. You know, I, I'm just ten years down the road. Well, is to withstand, you know, yeah. a chance of them saying, "Hey, the town has to bear the brunt of testing all those." Anything can happen. I, I know uh, it can. Yeah. yeah, not at this time. But it's not. Uh, you know, I asked a question a few months ago at the WRCC meeting, you know, has the county ever encountered 
any situation where anybody has actually excavated into these dry wells for a pool or anything like that. And they said, no, they have not. They're relatively new. Uh, when I say relatively new, you know, within how many years, I guess. And uh, well, probably back in at least 2010. Yeah, when we they started were definitely in Chapter 5 that came out in 2010. Yeah. They had been experimental so, for so, some time before that. So um, failures, I, I, I don't think we've had any failures within our town. I can't answer for the county. The, the only, the only failures that I'm aware of, uh, there's, there's, is because of clogging. If, um, if the homeowners don't maintain uh, their, their gutters Downs and bounce. it gets clogged with leaves and such, and that's actually just a clog at the beginning. It's not, it doesn't destroy the whole dry well. Um, there are some places where, where people have put dry wells in without the adequate um, uh, geotechnical investigation, mm -hmm. and they don't actually infiltrate. They just become a pond in their backyard, which is why we, we have, you know, the county has pushed us to uh, take the step of drilling. No, well, that's, well, that's why I was asking, because yeah. a lot of, we, we, I've seen some incidents in Baltimore County where it was just a few it's, geotech borings, and they made assumptions that, that didn't come that, true. That didn't come true. They got yeah. into clay or right. they, clay soils where it's, they had infiltration in other areas. Right. And they, like you said, it ended up with a situation where you had standing water. Failed right out. Failed yeah, because right of out. heavy, Failed. heavy they, storm they, events they because never water worked. couldn't get right. in the ground. Right. 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 Yeah, those so. are the, they never work kind of failures. Correct. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and, and I'm going to guess to do the, to do the development without those, you, you, the, the pond, the late, the, the management pond at, at the end of the property would triple in size, double in size. It, huh? it would, it w I would have to say it would probably be closer to tripling. Um, so yes, that's, and, and it also, also the idea is that. That wouldn't be preferable to the county. They don't want to see, no. they don't want to see concentrated infiltration or stormwater management. Correct. And our, and our first line is to try to yeah. infiltrate the water as much as possible. We, you know, Steve mentioned the, the stream and, and the uh, temperature sensitivity down on 27. But if we can get all of our water to infiltrate, yeah. then <laughs> we've met any thermal pollution that we could have possibly had. Right. Um, and, and in fact, um, that's the, the idea here is that we're going to infiltrate at the, uh, the house and then we're going to infiltrate the roads, which actually has a the same temperature gradient because the roofs are hot, the roads are hot. So right. getting it in the ground really helps keep that temperature, um, the discharge temperature down. Right. right. And when you can infiltrate, it's typically during very large storm events where the dilution of the amount of rain coming in kind of lowers the temperature of the discharge anyways. Right. And it's also those type of storms happen in, in July and August when the temperature of that first flush gets into the stream early mm -hmm. and and that's what cooks, that's her. What cooks yeah. it yeah. yeah one of the things that um, we had asked at uh, the information sessions was for uh, zoning setback um, variances so uh, one of the tasks that uh, the commission gave us was to uh, come in with a plan that met all of the zoning requirements. And, and this plan does, all 31 lots, um, they have 12 foot side back, or, uh, setbacks on the yards. Um, the uh, front yards are 35, the back yards are 45, and all of the units fit with the exception of some units would not be permitted to have the optional sunroom. So you can see on uh, on some of the plans, you'll see the dashed line is the uh, sunroom. So I'm looking at lot one here. That one's adequate. But if I looked at, um, say, unit 19, which is on the corner of Park Avenue, that that optional sunroom would not be available for, for that lot because it would require a zoning variance. Now, the bigger question that we have is, can we get some relief for the front yard setback? We'd like to move the... You know, it's a 35-foot setback, which is measured from the property line. The property line is actually seven feet from the edge of the curb because of uh, we have uh, a 22-foot wide section. Then we have a, a two-foot section of grass strip. We have a four-foot sidewalk and then a little bit more. So effectively, 
that 35 foot starts at seven feet from the, the, the flow line of the gutter. So it's really a 42 foot setback from the edge of the road. And we'd like to ask to have that reduced by five feet uh, to have that setback. So that way we can push our house forward up five feet, gives us a little bit bigger backyard. It doesn't change our density, doesn't give us an extra unit. Um, it does improve a couple of lots for the uh, sunroom I just mentioned, but um, that's, that's really, it doesn't change our plan other than uh, the front yard's a little bit smaller, but I still feel like it's pretty adequate because from the, again, from the flow line of 42 feet, we're, we're really still able to get our cars comfortably parked in front. No variances on the side yards, no variance on the uh, rear yards. Weren't you looking for several variances the first time? Maybe you the first more? time I was. The first time I was looking for uh, side, 12, rear, 12, and side, I was looking for everything. Um, you do different. What did you change? So, so what I changed was basically uh, the configuration of the lots. Um, I just basically shifted the ones that had extra space around enough that I could get everything to work. So all the lots are, are 84 feet wide, which gives me... Um, 12 feet on each side, plus my 60 foot uh, footprint. So that's that's the that's where you'll see they're all 84 feet wide. Um, so you were able to do that without reducing the number of homes. Correct. Lots. Correct. You said the original plan had 33. Well, well the the very first one, the yes, first one. yes. The first, the, I think we presented tw two or three times. <laughs> but the very yeah. first time I had I showed 33, <laughs> and then um, then we worked it again and came down to 31. So the last time you saw it was 31, but I was still looking for variances, not on, a, a, still a lot of them, but probably I think like 10 or 15 of, of them needed side yards. And I've worked, I've worked that through. Two go at the high street. Everything else enters the driveway correct. from. Only two are facing high street. Um, everything else was able to face interior. Okay. A little bit of math again from the 35 to 30. The 30 feet would be from what point? It would be from the property line to the building restriction line. Okay. And, and, and you might note on um, on the footprint layout, there's there's actually an offset. Um, so if you if you look at where the garage is, there's actually a two foot bump out. So our building restriction line would actually hold our garage back two feet from from uh, that point. So that would be that would be where we would we would measure our our unit or place our unit. I'll, I'll say I'm trying to go back and forth on this. I know when we originally talked, the first meeting we had, we had discussed this front yard issue, and I remember we weren't as concerned about that five feet in the front as we were with the rears and the side yards. Right. Correct. And that's I think the side yards and the rears were, were the ones that we, we just didn't want to see variances there. So... Uh,
I'm, I'm, I'm not adverse to, to granting that, that five-foot relief in the front. If, if I may add, if we reduce the uh, driveway by five feet, it also reduces our uh, infiltration, the size of our infiltration basin. But again, it won't it won't affect our dent. We're not trying to squeeze another lot in right. when that gets smaller. I just want to make sure we have adequate parking at the units. And yeah, even with the five foot reduction, because of the extra two feet where you sit back, you still we still make the what's the minimum six hundred. Six hundred, yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So technically, you're, logistically, you're only losing three feet of driveway. Yes, sir. That's concept. correct. Yes. But we still make the 600. Yep. Right. You've done a very fine job addressing that. Yeah, I agree with, with Henry. Considering some of the areas taken up by grass on the sidewalk, you're still having that depth in the front yard. Yeah. I agree with Henry. We're adding nice curbing. We're adding a, um, a large sidewalk. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that's the ADA width, right? Where it says. I'm sorry. Say that again. The ADA width. The like sidewalk. 40, 40 inch. Uh, this will be this will be four feet. This so uh, four I think foot. that's I think ADA is 32. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. adequate. And our our. Our grades are flat enough for the whole subdivision to be, uh, the sidewalks to be ADA compliant. And it's both sides. Correct. You're doing both sides. Correct. It's both sides and then off-site we intend to, uh, to take the uh, sidewalk and bring it up to connect to uh, the existing. Yeah, right there at Minnie's at Drive. Is that right? At Minnie Drive, correct. Yes. Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit of an odd situation there, so I'm, I'm really not, I haven't talked to Steve directly about this, but there's a telephone pole that's like dead center there, so we may, we may need to like sashay the sidewalk around it um, because otherwise we're splitting 12 inches on either side of the pole, and I don't, I don't think that's a good outcome either. Yeah, but, yeah there's a pole there, there's a fire hydrant that lays in there. Yeah, well, but we intend to make the connection. We just may need to not make it perfectly straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't expect you to move an off-site pole but put a sidewalk in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Unless Bob Ward wants to do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to be adverse. I, don't, I, I, I noticed I didn't get a smile on that one. So. <laughs> right. A handshake. <laughs> You say you do intend to put a sidewalk in between the stormwater management pond and Park Avenue? So yes, there'll be a sir, sidewalk in a parallel yes. with that? Okay. Yes. Because yeah. like I tell you, that's been my concern from the very beginning is that stormwater management pond right on Park Avenue. That's, that's a big concern of mine. I don't worry at all with it. I think the home and the neighborhood is going to look beautiful, but I worry about that stormwater management pond. We typically don't fence them, but we could do some type of um, a landscape fence, you know, maybe a uh, a picket fence or a pole. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what we, because then it becomes the town's kind of responsibility to, to maintain it. And, you know, we don't need things that catch plastic bags right. and cups and stuff. Well, either. I mean, that, those kind of details, I think we can work out in preliminary and, and moving forward. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah, this is a concept plan approval. We haven't even gotten county comments yet here on stormwater, so. Correct, I've not gotten Yeah, any. so, you know, we, we, we're, we're early in the game. And a lot of work, Rich. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we uh, grant concept plan approval for Equine Meadows. You have a second on that? I second it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Asked. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does that do include need, the zoning we, relief, or is that, make a, is that a one about should we side should side we or? note the zoning relief? Um, yeah, you might want to make your approval, you know, redo. Yeah. And grant it with the reduction from thirty-five to thirty feet. Right. Okay. 
uh, I'll revise my motion to grant uh, concept plan approval for equine meadows with uh, reduction in the front yard setback from 35 feet to 30 feet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. How'd you come up with the name? Good job. So we, we gave a list of names to the county, and um, they picked it out of the list. So, you know, um, I, I think it kind of makes sense. You know, we're kind of like, you know, we've got um, Manchester Valley's, uh, you know, the Mavericks, and so I, 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 like, I liked it. Um, I'm just, just curious if there's been little, little just jokes that are probably never going to force on that property before. Well, there were the pork. Right. Yeah. What, we, what, what was one of Porky them? Estates or Porky something? Porky Estates and Swine <laughs> Hollow, I think, was one. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's never been horses there. <laughs> I think they'll sell better. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman's not going to be happy. Chairman's not going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Never been a horse in that. Thank you. You're welcome. You. <coughs> I forgot we were still in meeting. Okay. Next on the agenda is the uh, R40 thousand zoning change request for solar. Good evening. My name is Gary Lamont. I'm the owner of the property, formerly known as the Dutter's Farm. Uh, this property extends from the wastewater treatment plant to the pond at Christmas Tree Park, uh, consisting of approximately 40 acres, which fronts on Oak Street, Locust Street, and Grafton Street, all zoned R40,000. I've been involved with this project for over 20 years, have not been able to develop it because of not having access to the public sewer system. Uh, we spent a lot of time and effort running conventional perk tests. It's not feasible to be done on perk tests. We cannot get enough lots to build the infrastructure for the subdivision. It just, the math just does not work. Uh, we're here tonight asking for, to add a text amendment to the R40 zoning district to allow a community solar, for, uh, a community solar farm. Um, that's just a brief history of the property. Uh, Ken Donaldson from uh, Donaldson, I pronounced that wrong. No, Donaldson uh, from Earth and Air Technologies is the company that would be um, partnering with to build the farm. If you have any questions concerning the solar operation, the solar farm, and what it actually does for the community, uh, he would be the one to ask those questions. Well, my first question isn't about the solar farm. My question is about how many properties in town would be impacted by this. Is this a text amendment to allow one property to do solar? Is that the only property large enough to meet this text amendment in the R40? Because you know my position. You, we, we've had the opposite where people have tried to push amendments to target a specific property by changing the zoning code to say you can't do that and I, I I'm I'm not a big fan of targeted text amendments for one specific property I've never had been. so I'm just curious are there other properties in town that meet the size requirements that were specified in here if I recall because it says no less than 10 acres so that was my thought. Okay. That's, that was my first question. <laughs> now I got a couple of questions on solar. How, how, how big a facility are we looking at Can on the property? Good evening. Um, so the facility for the, first of all, this is a community um, energy generating system that uh, is limited in size and is regulated by the Public Service Commission. 
So everything has to be uh, go through the Public Service Commission to be approved as a <laughs> subscriber organization to even build or own one of these projects. So the largest system that is allowed in this program is two megawatts, which is roughly five acres per megawatt. So we're looking at, I think we're doing like 12 acres uh, where the actual physical footprint would be close to or closer to like 10 acres of solar panels. Um, this is uh, a, a brief history of the, with this, uh, the state four years ago came up with the community solar energy generator program. It was a pilot program to allow um, these systems to be built and the community to be able to buy electricity from these systems. <coughs> and there's several reasons for that. Um, if you, you know, co even come down the, the main thoroughfare here, you don't really have the roof space or the ground to put solar. So this allows individuals that would not have access uh, or even the proper roofing to put a solar system in to be able to buy into solar. And when I say buy into solar, be able to buy electricity from these community solar programs. Um, also, these solar is, is pretty expensive. And so there's individuals that can't afford solar. This is replacing really your utility, BGE, Potomac Edison, wherever you are uh, on the grid, this here being Baltimore Gas and Electric. So subscribers would be able to subscribe to the energy that this system is putting out. So it's a big benefit we believe to the community, hence community solar energy generator system. So anybody within the community would be eligible to buy into these systems. So I think it also meets you know, the, the goals of the, uh, the, the concept plan, the master plan for, for the town as well, with sustainability, renewable, clean uh, energy. Um, the state just this year, actually last month, uh, adopted, uh, regulate, adopted um, uh, uh, under, um, let me just read the, it's the Clean Energy Jobs Act that was effective October 1st last month, which says 50% of electricity in the state of Maryland has to be from renewable. 14.5% of it has to be from solar. So there's, and that's by 2030. So there's a real big push for renewable energy. So these community energy systems are relatively new in a sense that a lot of the rooftop and everything has been saturated for the most part. Not to say that there aren't individuals still getting solar on the roof, but it's slim because this has been going on for the past 10 years and pretty much a lot of the bigger companies have moved out of, of the state because this market is getting saturated. So this community solar program concentrates <coughs> solar panels in an area like Gary's property, which is an ideal property to be able to build a project of this size. And therefore, we can, you know, an individual home may use, let's say, five kilowatts. So this system could supply, in essence, 300 plus uh, houses. It's also, you know, the town can also, can also purchase the electricity from them. And the good part about this too is the electricity is going to be just as, ch just as uh, uh, cheaper than what the utility is uh, supplying because we can supply the generation portion of it, the distribution portion of it, and the transmission. So the entire bill. So individuals get credited for the electricity. Let's say they want to buy electricity from 10 panels. So those 10 panels supply the electricity and offsets 100% of the individual's bill at or below utility costs. And for the most part, these are below utility costs. So that's the, the, good, uh, the, the good part about this as well is that the utility in the past wouldn't allow you to offset all of the electricity, but this law allows that to offset all charges on the bill. And then, with the exception of your meter, there's always going to be a meter charge, you know, $5 or $8, whatever the meter is, but not the 
kilowatt hours of your bill is offset completely. So there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, good aspects of, of, of this. It does need, we, you know, we do need a larger space right now. The, the ordinance within the town doesn't really give us, uh, give us an avenue to do this. We've tried in the past to do one of these systems and we just didn't have the path to go to, to uh, build a system on a 10 or 12 acre site. So this, by adding a text amendment, um, would, uh, would allow that to, to occur. Specifically, community solar energy generator system, generating systems, and, and that has to be regulated by the Public Service Commission. They, we have to be certified, we have to be bonded, licensed, insured. You know, we have to follow the requirements, of, you know, just like BGE, the Public Service Commission regulates them, this is regulated by the Public Service Commission. Well, it's Which, well, I understand all that, but I think the question I'm having is, typically, when citing these community systems or any kind of solar facility, they're, they're typically looking at either old industrial land, brownfields, or they're looking at agricultural land. They're not typically going into residentially zoned properties and putting in solar. Uh, I know this is kind of putting, going a little ahead of the game, but you know, Mr. Lamont gave a description as to where the property sits. We, all, we know where the property sits, but it would be helpful to see who adjoins this property because, I mean, we have an R40,000 zoning which suggests is there adjacent residential that is yeah. immediately next to this property that is going to be looking solar panel. Not to say that that's... It would be right at the end of... But I, I think when people move on the... In, into a house and they've got adjacent residential zoning, I, I believe their expectation is probably that it's going to be residential land use coming in behind, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on that property. And uh, I've been involved in some solar projects, and quite frankly, I'm surprised that most people would rather see the residential than the solar, which, for whatever reason, they think the solar is more obtrusive. So, yeah, I'm just leery because... The, the typical location for these things are industrial and agriculturally zoned properties. And, it, it, and you are correct. And ideally, we target that, but there's few and far between. And with the... Well, I understand because the yeah. pushback is, is significant yeah. in Baltimore yeah. County. It, yeah. it, they've, they've even, even though the council approved areas, it's very difficult to get those facilities through the zoning process because the neighborhood opposition even out in, in the middle of nowhere, yeah. is, is extensive. Yeah, we, we, we feel the pushback, you know, all, you know, all the time. Everybody supports it except when it's around them. Yeah. And I understand, yeah. you know. And like, like I said, the, the, um, the Senate Bill 516, the Clean Energy's Job Act, the push from the state, I mean, eventually we can't be immune, and I'm not saying the town, but the, the state is going to have to, they're, they're going to have to put these systems somewhere. They're oh, going to have to understood. Go I mean, we ideally would love to put them out of sight, out of mind, industrial, Brownsfield, perfect site. And I mean, and, and I'm not on, under any illusion that some agricultural land has to be converted. It has to be converted. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even delegates from the urban areas yeah. have come to that conclusion. The most pro environmental people have come to the conclusion that if you're going to make solar work, you're going to have to have some agricultural conversion because you need the mass, you need the space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. These systems also are, they're, after their use, 25 years of use, we can put the land right back to its original use. So that's another benefit of these projects are that they're temporary in nature, and temporary year, 25 years. But we're not putting a foundation, we're not putting a building, we're not putting a slab of concrete where you can't do anything other than that 20, 30, 40 years down the road. So that can actually be put back to its original use and farm use. Um, you know, if corn goes up to $30 a, a, a bushel, Gary may say, you know, we want to take, take this out and go back to corn, you know, so you would just have to buy the system. But, you know, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, that's a realization. 
Yeah, because to hear Henry, I think my mind goes to as I drive down 97 past the college and I see all those panels that I wouldn't want to sit on my deck and see that. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it runs past Christmas Tree Park, so a lot of kids play in that area. A lot of kids. Yeah. So now you're building a tall fence, it's just kind of an eyesore. And well, we, well, well easy, but, uh, we, and it, for me, it's not even so much that, just uh, because we're moving towards these types of energy systems. There's, there's trade-offs. I understand that. Uh, the, at the community college, I think the location's appropriate. It's, it's, it's along 97. That's, that's an appropriate location. Right, I just wouldn't want to sit on my deck and see it. Right, and, and that's my only concern about it being in a, uh, in a property zone residential. It, you know, I'm just, I, well, I, I struggle with it because the goal is noble, mm -hmm. and it's a good goal. I just, I just struggle with it. Because it's an R40,000, and as Mr. Lamont, uh, to his credit, succinctly put it, can't get his residential to work out there. So he's looking for some use to, to profit from his property. And I'm not averse to somebody making a profit, but I got, I got to look at the whole picture. I've got two basic questions. What, what's the current zone of, of his property? R40,000. 40, what are, what's the question in front? What are, what are we trying to do? They want to... In the R40,000 zone, it's not a use that's allowed there. Right. And they, so they want to rewrite it. That's why I think we need to cut And that's this word, text amendment, that y'all are... Using. Yeah. They want, to, they want to make it a conditional use, I guess, subject to the board's approval. That's what I... On that property. Yeah. The second question is, is it not the last piece of property before you leave town limits? Yes, it is. It's the last piece of property before... It's the, it's the property just past here, right past the back ponds. It's the property right next to Riley's Garden. Yeah. And before our... Before the sewage... Spray. Our sewage graveyard. treatment right. system. Yeah. And by the graveyard. Yeah, over there by the graveyard. Which this right. is... Typically, once this is installed, it's going to be just like a graveyard. There's no activity on it. Rare. Third question Very involves your... your um, how high-tech your solar is. Are you going to have the... Um, the panels that move with the sun? Or Correct. Have fixed that, panels? That's an option. That's our first option is a single axis tracker. Okay. You see, that's really getting past where we need to be at this point. We're just trying to decide whether mm -hmm. it's permitted in this zoning. The board's going to hate me, but Alex isn't here and Bob isn't here. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking we might... I don't want to string Mr. Lamont out for a long period of time, but I think we probably should have a work session amongst the, an open work session, which obviously Mr. Lamont and his representatives could attend to discuss this a little further amongst the other members of the board. I, 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 I just think we should. I think it's a good idea. And, and you do have drawings of, of this that shows the residential. I, yeah, because that, that, that would be helpful to have also at that yeah, meeting would be to show the property and then all the adjacent land uses yeah. And, and which, where the homes are, the, I'm sorry. No, which shows shows the um, uh, land, landscape being buffered uh, from any residential right. uh, view. So. But it would be helpful just to yeah. get it, see, see a map and see the context. Yeah, and we, and we, we we submitted a bunch of copies, yeah. both electronically and hard copy. Okay, and I think that they all yeah. went to council, but I I found one in one of the council. Yeah. And so we can just get copies of this. But yes, he did show us. Okay. And, and I think I sent it electronically too, Michelle. If not, we can send you electronic uh, uh, copies. Well, I, can't, I can't print this big, but you know, well, this is what it was, and it will show the topic. So I can, I can actually send that out when we plan a work session. Yeah, that would be helpful. You see, at this point, at this point, I'm, I'm not as concerned about all that because I, as a board, once, if, if we approve and allow the use, then we're going to run you through and you're going to do as the things that are necessary to make the solar compatible <coughs> with the adjoining properties. But the bigger question at this point is whether we want to permit it there. The, the big question that, is the, the text amendment. That's exactly right. Is, because is all these the, other questions, that that's concept and final plan approval stuff. Right. You know, how they cite the solar, what, do we have any glare glass on the panels so that people aren't getting
hit with light when the sun hits it a certain way. There's all the technical sure. aspects of the solar fields, which you're well aware of, obviously, that would be addressed at that point. But we, we need to decide whether it's appropriate. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm not ready at this point to make that decision. And I would like to have the opinions of the other, the chairman and, and Mr. Graham, and I think a work session and maybe waiting a month before we make a final recommendation one way or the other isn't inappropriate in this case. Okay. If, I can, just, <coughs> if I can just make a comment. Uh, time is of the essence on a, a, a lot of these projects because of the ITC, the federal tax credits that comes along with these. So they tend to go down after the end of this year from 30% to 26% and then the following year. So not to say that we were going to do this before the end of the right, year, it wasn't but, going to happen. but time, time is critical with a lot of the incentives that make these programs work. Understood. Um, so. Understood. Like I said, we're not trying, I'm not trying to drag you out. I just, mm -hmm. it, I, this is not something I'm going to, I can just make a spot decision on. I want to think this through and do a little more research sure. on my own and then have a work session with the rest of the board. Like I said, which you're yeah. obviously welcome to attend, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think this was discussed. Who owns and maintains this 10, 12 acres of solar panels? Uh, the owner of the solar project will maintain it. It's all, you know, whoever installs, builds, and owns will be maintaining it, landscaping. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll just be leasing the property from you. Yeah. Correct. And it's uh, bonded decommissioning requirements, insurance requirements, and that's all public service commission requires yeah. all that. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so concerned yeah. on that yeah. end because yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure the they're, 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 they're tightly regulated. Absolutely. Just make sure the yeah. town's not responsible no. for anything. You yeah. know, like no, that, the, the, cost. the P, yeah. PSC takes care of that. Because that scared the mayor and council away from a project several years ago when we were considering solar. It was the cost, the expense, the maintenance, warranties, and there's a lot of things that were unknowns. But this is good. Okay, I agree with Henry. I think there's too many unknowns here. So let's schedule a work session if we could and go from there. Yeah, I will get an email out. So yeah, get an email out so yeah. we can get, because Alex should be back tomorrow and, and Bob gets his emails at work, so we can try to act on something sooner rather than later. Okay. So we can give, give the gentleman an answer. Okay. Everybody agree? Good call. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Any public comments from anybody? That means you, Mr. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you this evening. Good to be seen. I, I would, I would have Thank been you. shocked if you weren't here, so... My, my Tuesdays are made when I know that you're here paying attention and keeping our feet to the fire. So, there you go. How's sheets working out? So far, so good. Good. Very well, yeah. Parking is good for us. Good. Yeah, that access worked out real nicely. Being able to get to that light makes a big mm -hmm. difference. Coming out over onto our property, they're flowing good. There's no jam up, there's no back, back mm -hmm. Yeah. Flowing very well. Good. Okay, very well. Ed. Okay, I make a motion that the November 19th, 2019 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting be adjourned. Any seconds? I'll second the motion. You're all approved. Say aye. 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 aye.